Hello there, fellow audiophiles. So you may be wondering why I've brought you here today. Believe it or not, this is where I grew up. This is where it all began. I was born over there on this, on this rock that you can see right here. And I was conceived over there. And clearly uh, I needed to go back to my roots to uncover the truth. The truth about the Apple AirPods Max, which is what we're gonna talk about here today. Okay, so I have with me here the Apple AirPods Max. And in this video, we're gonna talk about whether or not there have been any meaningful changes to this headphone that are worth caring about for 2025. As always, these videos are made possible by headphones.com with a massive, ridiculous 365 day return policy. Make sure you check out headphones.com for your next audio purchase. Like, comment, and subscribe. I think maybe not everybody is aware of the current story about the AirPods Max and why this is relevant or why this is interesting. I recently did an ANC headphone tier list video where I included this headphone. Right after releasing that tier list video, uh, there was some information that came out about this headphone and a potential firmware update that would change the sound. There were some measurements that came out from a, from a number of different places indicating that this might be the case. Measurements specifically on the BNK 5128, um, which is the most advanced, the more advanced measurement system. And so I figured I have to get this in, I have to test this, I have to figure out if this is true and verify the change. And so I did a whole bunch of testing on multiple different measurement systems, including the older ones that people were maybe a little bit more familiar with, as well as the new BNK 5 Eight. And the results will shock you. No, the, the results are interesting. I'll, I'll show you guys the results here in a minute, but I just want to kind of like give you a conclusion up front here so you don't need to watch the rest of this video if you don't care. Uh, but in short, in all of my testing, it seems that what's going on here is that we now just understand it a bit better and understand how it can vary on different heads a little bit more. We don't really know with 100% certainty if there was any change. Sometimes I think maybe there was, but then all of my testing shows that it may actually just be down to confounding variables. I'm able to still get the same results that I did before, uh, certainly with some of the measurement equipment. And if there is an intentional tuning change, it is very minor at most. But I just want to back up here and give you guys a bit of context. The AirPods Max got a refresh recently, and they mainly updated it with USB-C. Uh, instead of lightning. And while that's a welcome change, a lot of the criticism for that refresh was that they didn't make any changes to the sound, that there wasn't any additional change. And essentially it would have been a great opportunity for Apple to uh, have made some improvements to the platform. And it seemed that they didn't do that. And when it comes to the criticism of the AirPods Max's sound quality, the transition between the upper mids and treble is not handled very well. The upper mid range uh, presentation, the ear gain as we call it in the audiophile world is uh, subdued while the treble is a bit on the uh, peaky, uneven side of things. A bit harsh, a bit fatiguing, glaring, all of those sort of words, uh, while at the same time lacking clarity as a result of the upper mid-range recession. And these were all fair criticisms. These were criticisms that were backed up by the data as well uh, that would show this kind of behavior quite substantially. But since then, more recently, it's been measured by a number of different outlets on the BNK 5 and 2.8, um, which uh, for anybody who is, wants to get into the weeds there, that system has the more accurate acoustic impedance. It has an actual ear canal, whereas the other systems don't. And the measurements done on the BNK 5 and 28 seem to indicate, at least the most recent measurements, seem to indicate that there was a change as a result of a firmware update. Um, now, I've measured this headphone with the latest firmware. I'll put that up on the screen here so you know which one it is that I'm talking about because they may change it again in the future. Um, but what I've found is that what's actually going on here is this is likely a result of several confounding variables. So number one is that the leakage compensation on this headphone seems to affect not just the base region, but specifically that upper mid-range band around three kilohertz as well. So for anybody unaware, the AirPods Max and several other headphones like this uh, have what's called leakage compensation built in, which is great because it means that if for anybody who wears glasses or if you get an imperfect seal for whatever reason it will compensate the loss of bass that would normally occur with passive closed back headphones or you know headphones that don't have leakage compensation built in and with these headphones it would sort of recognize that that there was a break in the seal and compensate for it by boosting the bass accordingly but interestingly it also seems to affect the contour of the upper mid-range and lower treble um, so it becomes a little bit more forward, and I'll show you guys a measurement that indicates this quite strongly. 
And you can clearly see that there's a leak because the drop-off still exists in the ultra-low frequencies, but the, you can see the bass boosting accordingly or to compensate, and then you can also see uh, how it affects this ear gain region too. Oh, and one other thing, you might notice that the graphs here look a little bit more wiggly. That's just because I'm using the M noise test here. Headphones like these often use volume dependent dynamic equalization. And that means that the response can actually change depending on the crest factor of the music. And so a traditional sweep or pink noise isn't enough to get a sense of that. And this is effectively a more music-like stimulus. And for those who are unaware, you can actually get a frequency response result with music as well, with actual music. They sweep, pink noise, M noise, music. These are all different stimuli that can be used to measure headphones, and we visualize this as frequency response. So for anybody who says, you know, oh, but a test tone isn't music. Well, yeah, but you can also get the same result with music. In this case, I don't think it matters all that much. I just wanted to ensure that this wasn't a factor, and that's why it looks a little bit wiggly like that. So that's confounding variable number one. That is really difficult to actually get a sense of where the ear gain is when there is a seal versus when there isn't because this headphone is accommodating for a break in seal in a number of different ways. I was able to actually replicate on the 5128 and on the Gross 43 AG both conditions, both the more relaxed ear gain presentation and when there was a subtle leak involved, a more forward ear gain presentation. Um, it, but it's on the 5128 where this actually looks like it would be really good. And that I think is the bigger confounding variable. It's the bigger issue. Maybe this is actually down to the BNK 5128 just being more accurate in that band, having uh, the more accurate acoustic impedance and actually having an ear canal. There are trends that show the gross, the traditional measurements that most of us might be familiar with, um, that show headphones kind of underestimate in that region. Uh, headphones kind of underestimate, maybe a little bit lower down, maybe somewhere closer to two kilohertz, but it's certainly close enough where that could be a factor. But the real advantage of the 5 and 2 8 is at the low frequencies, specifically with IEMs, but also likely some closed back headphones as well where the 5128's more human-like acoustic impedance is actually going to present you with a more accurate result. Um, and we did a video a while ago on you know, the issues with IEMs that actually showed this difference. So the fact that the AirPods Max varies more substantially at a much higher frequency, that's not what I would really expect from a just a difference in accuracy between rigs. I really think at the moment, the headphone is behaving differently on different heads. And this is something that we observe with many closed back headphones more often than not, and we do observe it with open back headphones as well. And it's actually not that uncommon for this variation to exist in this band as well, in the, in the ear gain region that we're talking about. Um, so for some people, it may actually be a lot more clear, and for other people, it may be a lot more muffled. And to me, this immediately made me have some thinky thoughts that, you know, a lot of the time, I think people will look at a measurement and have that inform their subjective uh, experience, have it inform their perception or lead their perception. But this is why I think it's so valuable for people to continue to give subjective reports. And we can't just use the data because, you know, a head like the Gross system, the, the 43 AGs and similar heads like the 45 CA and the Keymar and so on, they may hear this headphone a lot worse <laughs> than the 5 and 2 8. The 5 and 2 8 may actually hear it better. And if I say that sounds weird because these are like, you know, inanimate objects, they're measurement rigs, they're not humans. But they do give us a picture at the eardrum of effectively different heads and different ears. And the same would be true for different people, right? And I want to ensure that we're careful about this and not just immediately jump to, you know, oh, it looks super, you know, muffled and dull on the gross, therefore it sounds like that, because it might not. Um, the same is true for the 5128. It lo might look super clear and, you know, really solid for the ear gain. I mean, it doesn't look ideal, but it looks better in some conditions. It might not actually sound like that. And to give you guys a sense of how this headphone sounds to me, it still sounds quite uneven there for the transition between the upper mids and lower treble, so the ear gain. Um, again, it's, it's the same kind of like harsh treble presentation as a function of the relaxed or subdued ear gain, and the ear gain itself lacks a bit of clarity, for, for me at least. Um, but I think in the past where I may have said, this is how this headphone is, just looking at that data that was captured on the 43AG or on, on the Gross systems, Seeing this new data, particularly in the presence of a leak or some other, other you know, uh, maybe seal interactions, uh, you know, I'm not ready to say that that's how it is for everybody. And while the science may tell us that, you know, sound quality is universal, people's experiences of these products is not. 
And with certain designs, especially high acoustic impedance designs, closed back headphones, you're gonna have a harder time of getting that kind of consistency from head to head. And so you need to accompany your measurement with a subjective report for how you actually hear it. Um, it's not that one is right and the other is wrong, it's that they kind of go hand in hand. They give you multiple perspectives of a thing. They give you additional viewpoints, and those additional viewpoints are essential. And on my recent tier list, my ranking there, uh, I'm still gonna place it into C tier. Uh, the sound quality here, it has good quality bass. The mids are okay, but they, the ear gain, again, is a bit of an issue, and as a result, the treble is as well. Um, but my bigger issue with this headphone is that it's just uncomfortable. Like, it, the clamp pressure, uh, I was just walking with it, and it, it presses really hard at the top of my temples. It probably is gonna be more okay for people with smaller heads, but for me, it clamps in a spot that is particularly sensitive. I'm a sensitive boy. <laughs> Another thing that I just wanted to mention is that um, Apple does have their accommodation settings, or headphone accommodations, accessibility settings, and all of that kind of stuff. But that was not responsible for um, what was actually going on with the measurement, and it took me a while to figure out that. Um, but the headphone accommodations does give you three different settings, balanced, vocal range, and treble boost, right, brightness. Um, I actually suggest not using those because even if you use it in balanced mode, so say you just turn it on, put it in balanced mode, uh, it actually just boosts the treble. Uh, so it keeps the frequency response mostly the same and then boosts the treble. So this is meant for people with you know hearing loss of some kind, um, even in balanced mode. The vocal range does meaningfully boost the ear gain, actually to a point where it might be too much for some people. So unless you're actually trying to compensate for hearing loss or, you know, if, if the treble sounds rolled off to you, I wouldn't bother putting it, I wouldn't bother turning on the headphone accommodations. It's nice that they include that, but really what they need to do is give you some sort of EQ functionality, some sort of, some sort of customizability, um, so that you can actually adjust the frequency ranges that need to be adjusted with this headphone. Um, and I wouldn't say that it's a lot, but there, there are some things that you could do. Now, as far as testing with ANC on versus ANC off, um, there is a subtle difference there, but I wouldn't say it's make or break. I actually just prefer using it with ANC on because the benefit of its ANC, which is pretty good, is worthwhile. So for the function of noise canceling, it does a better job than most of the headphones um, that I've evaluated. Um, I will, if you guys are looking for the data on that, I'll try and post that on the forum uh, thread link below. So all of this is an overly nerdy way of saying that AirPods Max 2025, certainly there were those of us hoping that this would be a change for the better um, because Apple has definitely delivered on their AirPods Pro 2. That's still one of the best true wireless in-ears as far as sound quality is concerned on the market today. And we were hoping that the AirPods Max would follow suit. And it seems that that is still not the case, unfortunately. If you are super into all the Apple products and you have a full Apple ecosystem, it may be worth considering, especially because the spatial audio stuff that they do is very good. The leakage compensation is good. The noise canceling is good. The bass quality is good. There are many good things about this headphone. The design is, it feels like it's you know high quality, but there are just as many drawbacks as there were before, just one less because it now has USB-C, making it a little bit more versatile. But anyways, that does it for this video. Let me know which ANC headphones you would like me to test next. I'm gonna try and get more of those in because that's that's kind of my priority these days. I'm trying to find something that's actually great. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking. As always, I'll try to post the measurements that I've done in the, in the forum thread linked below. But as always, you can chat with me or other like-minded audio people in our Discord, also linked below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Behold, this is where I am from. It's a nice, uh, small little town in the middle of nowhere. Uh, it's actually in the desert, but it's snowy right now, so you can't really tell. It is, uh, I would say that it is peaceful, but there is a bird that is screaming at me that doesn't like it that I'm here talking about headphones. I must have said something mean about a headphone that it owns. And actually, that mountain, if you can see that mountain up there, that is one that I would like to climb. It's better to climb it actually this time of year. Better chance of slipping and falling to your death. And then you don't need to be a burden on the taxpayer. All right.